Serious people of Reddit, what was the creepiest thing you experienced that you thought was paranormal, but was actually much scarier when you found out what really caused it? When I was 8 we were on a long holiday, staying with some family in a town called Sirat it's in country Queensland, Australia. I was staying in their son's room who had moved to Brisbane for university. Each night I had the same recurring nightmare of an alien tentacle trying to grab me. After a week I was terrified of going to sleep, but my parents kept telling me that it was okay. I was just frightened because we were staying somewhere new and that it would be okay. While I couldn't get to sleep, I kept watching the clock, waiting for the sun to come up, and terrified of the alien. It was just after 2am, when a large tentacle landed on the bed. I screamed in terror as I felt the tentacle wriggling. I jumped out of bed and kept screaming. My parents, aunt, uncle, and sister run into the room, to find me huddled in the corner screaming. Turns out it was an adult carpet python over 2 meters long, 6.5 feet. Each night it worked its way under a ceiling tile and onto the bed. I still have an Indiana Jones fear of snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? About 7 years ago, my family rented a one story house. It was originally one bigger house that was split off into two and there was another family that lived in the other part that we didn't really talk with. During the night, I would hear what sounded like knocks above the ceiling, but any entrance to the small crawl space between the ceiling and the roof was patched up when the house was divided. For a while, I thought there was a ghost who lived in the attic, and I would have trouble going to sleep without a light on. After we moved out, I heard through the grapevine that the neighbor's kid was caught spying on the new people that moved in. Turns out that he had broken a hole in the ceiling of his closet to get into the crawl space and had been looking through holes that he had bored in the ceiling overlooking the other part of the house. The noises I heard was him moving around on him arms and knees up there. As a young kid, I had nightmares of waking up to see my mother hovering over my bed by the window. She just blankly stared down at me and my sister. I'd get so scared yelling mom, mom, and she never responded. It knew it was not my mom. When I was older I told my aunt about it, and she told me they weren't dreams. It was real. My mom would go into our rooms randomly to check on us. She had serious mental health issues that got worse over the years. Occasionally she would have episodes of anxiety of something happening to us and guard us at night. Due to the traumatic death of her first child it apparently triggered obsessive anxiety when we were younger. I now know the whole fucked up backstory and can sympathize with why it would make any parent get to that mental state, but I still shudder when I think of the blank face stare. I still tend to associate the nightmare mom as not being my mom. Didn't think this was paranormal, but definitely thought it was creepy and ended up being more than I bargained for. When I was 13, I had a small jewelry box my mom gave me that had cushions for rings. I had 6 rings that I kept in it, nothing of value, think mood rings and silver rings. I was somewhat neurotic as a kid and had spent an afternoon arranging my room and I'd put the 6 rings in a specific order. I opened the box one day and noticed that 2 of the rings were out of order. I thought someone in my family had moved them because there was zero explanation for this. I asked my family if anyone had touched them, and they all insisted no one had opened the box, but I was convinced someone had to have gone through it. My dad ended up going through our entire house checking for missing stuff and the only missing things were an old bottle of hydrocodone from the medicine cabinet and some of my mom's gold jewelry from a bathroom drawer. Turns out there had been strings of robberies in the neighborhood, where thieves had broken in but only taken prescription drugs and small gold items. None of the robberies had indications that the homes had been broken into, and things like laptops, diamond jewelry and other valuables had been left alone. My family wouldn't have known anything was amiss aside from the fact I was so convinced something was off. I was 24 and working at a startup.com. I spent a weekend at my parents' house, came back to my apartment, and went into my bedroom, where I saw my bed was made. 
Felt my heart stutter as I stood frozen in the doorway, because I never ever made my bed. It was something I consciously refused to do. After the initial shock, I went through the apartment examining the closets, under the bed, etc. I calmed down after a while, convincing myself that I must have made the bed before I left for my parents and just forgotten about it. Deep down, I knew it wasn't true, but I couldn't think of any other explanation. I later found out it was the woman I was dating at the time who did it. She was the person who hired me. We'd been in a relationship less than a month, but she managed to somehow get a copy of my key. She used to visit my place and snoop through my things when I was gone. She also slept in my bed overnight several times when I was away for the weekend. If she hadn't made my bed, I never would have known anything was going on. When I was 12-ish something, I came home to find the bedroom's lights on. If it was just my bedroom, then it wouldn't have been a problem. But my brother's room lights were also on, and we never leave those lights on. Could have been my brother or my mom, but one was in the army, while the other was at work. I was a little freaked out, but tried to tone it down by saying that I might have left them on before going out. Then I turn and see a couple of wooden spoons on top of our kitchen's cabinet. I knew for a fact that I hadn't left any spoons sitting there. I also didn't recognize those two spoons. That was when I realized that someone had been inside our house. Long story short, I had lost my keys a few days prior and my neighbor, who was the same age as I, found them. Instead of giving it back, he kept them with himself. Days later, his mom asked him to, IDK, deliver something to my mom, but there was no one at home, so he used his keys to enter our house. He forgot his mom's wooden spoons there, and if it wasn't for this, we would never have found out that he entered our house. I think he stole money from us as well. IDK if it fits but this happened a few days ago, on Valentine's night. I live on the ground floor of some apartments there was really intense knocking on my door and some neighbors doors at midnight I looked out the peephole of my door, but couldn't see anything, even when my door got knocked on again I was honestly terrified, I couldn't see anything after a minute or so, I heard my upstairs neighbors door open, crying, and a phone call to 911 I went outside to check on her. And there was a woman I'd never seen before, who I learned lived next to me her husband had been abusing her and had just kicked her out of the apartment it was freezing outside and she was only in her underwear he had broken her glasses and taken her phone, wallet and keys it took the police 5 hours to get here I hope she's alright. This did not happen to me but it happened in my city when I was in high school. A family thought that their house was haunted because things like furniture and objects would randomly move or go missing. This went on for several months. They even reached out to their pastor to bless the house. Well, the house wasn't haunted. It turned out that a drifter had wandered in at some point and had been living in their attic. He would come out when the family was at work and eat their food and go through their things for cash and stuff to sell. One day, one of the family members came home unexpectedly and caught them. Called police for an active break-in. The cops quickly discovered what had been going on. A little after I graduated high school some friends and I were hanging out at a local park after dark. Decided to go walk through the woods for the spookiness of it. About 20 minutes and we hear this loud screaming from behind us and barely see this dark figure rushing towards us at what we would describe as supernatural speed. So we hauled ass and didn't stop until we were out of the wooded area and didn't see it. A couple of friends claimed it appeared to be floating towards us as it howled like a banshee. We later found out that area of the woods is popular for homeless people to hang out in and shoot up. So instead of some sort of evil wood spirit, it was most likely a homeless heroin addict running at us at full speed and screaming. I had a blind dog growing up, and she barked at things that were there, and things that weren't. One night, around midnight, she woke up my mom and I, my dad's too heavy of a sleeper, by barking at the wall next to the back door. I woke up, but I was maybe 9, so I went right back to sleep. My mom got up and ushered her back to bed. 
That same night, an arsonist hid my neighborhood. He set fire to a luckily vacant house for sale, and it burned to the ground. Following his footsteps in the snow, he then passed between my bedroom and our garage and nearly lit our garage. Then our dog and my mom woke up, and we think that scared him away, and he went across the street and burned the neighbor's garage instead. Then he stood in their front yard and watched it burn. He walked out onto the street, and they lost his footsteps. They never caught him. Going to tell the short version of this story. A previous owner had died in one of my childhood homes. Strange things happened there that drove us, and my dog, absolutely nuts, but it became exceptionally creepy when my sister, who was sleeping in the basement apartment, began insisting that somebody was watching her at night. We later found an old camera hidden in the walls, and learned that said previous owner was arrested for spying on the girl who rented his basement apartment.